In this lesson, we will speak about geofences and iBeacons. Go to the notification section of the add-on store and install the geofencing add-on. There is now a new menu called GeoAlert with two entries, notifications and geofences. Let's start to explore geofences. A geofence is an area you define on a map and you want that something happens inside your app when the device interacts with this area. Let's see how to set up one in your back office. Let's create our first geofence from the geofences menu. Give a name to your geofence. Give the address of the center of your area. When you have positioned the center of your zone, just define the radius of this zone. You can use your mouse or you can enter the radius directly in the dialog. My first geofence is created. You can create several geofences for one project. The list view will give you the list of geofences associated to your account and you can also look at them in the map view. Now that we have defined the geofences on the map, we need to set up the notifications that will be received on the device when it interacts with the geofence. To do so, go to the notifications menu and create a geo alert. A geo alert is pretty similar to a push notification. Define your message, select the action that will happen when people open your notification, and define what will trigger the notification on the phone. In our case, this is a geofence and we are going to select one of our geofences, um, maybe the one in New York City. I've just shown the basics to create the geo-alert, but of course, you can add more complexity and create more targeted notifications. Following my example, I can refine the trigger settings. So when people will enter my geofence, I can decide to show the notification only during opening hours. Other example, I can choose a different interaction with my geofence, so maybe when people exit the region. Play with those options and create the perfect notification. Be careful not to spam your users. You can activate this cool option to only notify a second time a user after 24 hours, for instance. When you look at the list of your geofences, you will see two interesting information. First, the status. If the geofence is green, it means that at least one notification is attached to it. If it's not green, it means that there is no notification attached to this geofence. And the notifications column will show you how many notifications are linked to one geofence. Now let's speak about beacons, but first let me show you what it is. So a beacon is a device like this that sends a Bluetooth signal. So if you open it, if you open it, uh, you will see that there is a micro circuit and then a battery and you will have to change the battery when this is empty. You can buy almost any type of beacons as long as they are compliant with iBeacons and Edistone. And I recommend to buy beacons that are compliant with both appellations because it means that they will work with your Android and iOS app. I give one example all the time to help people understand how beacons work, is the example of the lighthouse. A lighthouse is a building on the seashore that emits a light signal, and this light signal has a frequency and also a given range. And that's the same thing for beacons. When you buy them, you will set up the frequency of emission of the Bluetooth signal and also the power to the signal that will define the range. Most of the time you will keep the manufacturer's settings but you can still modify them. You just have to download the app of the manufacturer then detect your beacons with this app and change the settings. Now let's see how to set up beacons with your Good Barber project. Start by adding the iBeacons add-on from the add-ons library. When the add-on is installed, you'll be prompted to give the UUID of 
your beacons. Let me stop one second to explain what is the UID. The UID is a value that is shared among all the beacons you are going to buy and this is the value your phone is going to track to detect if it receives a Bluetooth signal sent by a beacon. Find and enter the UID of your beacons in your backend and also the beacon layout which is almost the same thing for Android devices. When it's done, register your beacons in your backend. Name your beacon to easily identify it in your backend and define the major ID and the minor ID. UUID, major ID, minor ID, let me explain. The UUID, the major and the minor constitute a unique identifier for a beacon. Let's say you have two physical spaces where you want to put beacons, the triangle and the star. Your challenge is to declare your beacons in your backend so that you know exactly where each beacon is located in each store. Beacons located in the triangle shop will have all the same major ID but a different minor ID. Beacons located in the star shop will have a major ID different from the ones in the triangle shop and all of them of course will have the same major ID inside the star shop but a different minor ID. Note that all the beacons in the star shop and in the triangle shop have the same UUID. Now back to the backend. I have declared all my beacons with their major ID and their minor ID and now I'm going to attach notifications to them. The process to create a notification is the same as for a geofence. The only thing that will differ is the trigger type. Here you will choose among the list of your beacons which beacon will trigger the notification based on the settings you've put here. The list of notifications gives you a quick overview if the notification is attached to a beacon or a geofence and also what are the, what are the rules that will trigger the display of the notification on the device. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time and meanwhile, you know what to do.